your experience is so different at this age than my experience was. Sarah, welcome to SCAD TV Fest, and congratulations on your well-deserved Icon Award. I'm incredibly honored. This is actually one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do. Thank you. You have so many film and television credits, and you just gave an incredible master class to the students, and you advise them to really watch a lot of film and television and to notice things in addition to the acting, to notice the lighting, to notice the camera placement, to just notice so many things about the production. It's the best research you'll ever do. I thought that was great advice. I really believe that as an actor, our job is not just to stand on a mark and learn your lines. Then I worked with an actor years ago and it was very frustrating to me. He would constantly like miss his mark and he would shadow me all the time. And I said to him, you know, our job is not just to show up and say our lines. He's like, yes it is. And I said, no. I said, we are all a team here. And I made sure when I was on Buffy, I tried every job on set. So there is not a job on set that I haven't done. I have held a boom for an entire scene. Let me tell you something, my arms hurt. When actors skipped their lines or jumped in, I didn't know where to go. I pulled focus. That is a mathematical job. So as an actor, when you're off your mark, you can't hit the focus because it's a measurement. Mm -hmm. I've done camera. I highly recommend trying every job in your chosen profession. Mm -hmm. If you're you know, an interior design major, Try what it's like to cover a couch one day and see how difficult it is to get the fabric, really to get all of the, you know, the different angles. And that's what a school like this also offers because you do get to try out those different yeah. aspects of yeah. each chosen profession. And the students work together on the production. We have filmmaking students, we have acting students, we have production design students, we have sound students. So they're all working together and collaborating I want to talk to you about Wolf Pack, but first I'd like to take you back to that famous Buffy indie monologue. I'm sure you know the one, especially the line, every girl who could have the power will have the power. And I really highlight that because it was spoken at a time when maybe girls didn't have as much power or didn't feel that they had as much power as they do today. And now that you're executive producer on Wolf Pack, um, what are you seeking to do with that producer power? Well, I think going back to that speech, I look at the show as a whole, and that speech to me encompasses the entire show. When I was growing up, maybe there was Wonder Woman, but she was superhuman, right? She was six feet tall, she was an Amazon. She, I couldn't be her. There was no, you know, I looked up to Tootie on roller skates and Facts of Life, like there wasn't girls that could fight that were doing all these things, but were also real. And I think it really opened that conversation to have those characters, and now we take for granted that the women in, in film and television aren't just the girlfriend, the wife, the, like whatever those characters are. But I also came up at a time where it was still a pretty volatile business and actors, especially young actresses, were supposed to be seen and not heard and, you know, we were replaceable. And that is so often how we're made to feel and I don't believe that that's true and there has to be a place to be able to speak up for yourself but also in an appropriate manner with respect to the people that are above you and so that's what I've really tried to create on my sets is that everybody has a voice often that gets misconstrued too that it's about the young actors on my show no no it's also about the PAs that are there before we get there that leave afterwards that do the hardest work and they're also 22 years old and make sure that they have breaks to eat and if I have to be the one to do your job for 10 minutes so you can sit and have a sandwich like great I'm here I'll do it and a lot of times in this industry you hear the term above the line, below the line. And I hate that, mm -hmm. I hate it. That mm -hmm. producers and lead actors are up here and everyone else, it's like, yeah, well, without everyone else, this doesn't get made. This doesn't get made. And so I like to work on sets where we all really work together. As you mentioned before, taking note of the importance of all of these other aspects, and you're in the position of really being ultimately responsible for the, the outcome too. Yeah, and I'm in a position where I can make change. You can make I can make change, change happen mm -hmm. and, you know, I can take all my experience and, you know, now in the words of Glinda, use it for good, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it so that it's the norm on sets to have that situation. And I think you get a lot by having an actor producer on set because we're the ones that are there in the trenches every day. Mm -hmm. But to notice the details, yeah. very important. There's an impressive array of young actors in the Wolfpack Ensemble. What's your approach to connecting with teenage actors, given that you helped blaze the trail that they are on? 
you're a real teenage success story. Thank you. Rodrigo and I said this a lot too, my co-star, in that you know, sometimes we look at scenes and we look at it our way because we've been doing it for so long, but then they come in and they have this energy and this effusiveness and new ways to look at it, and so we have to equally learn from them. And I told them on day one, I said, look, I won't be here every day. I do go home a lot, but here's my cell phone. It's always on. Call me. And they really did. They really learned to be like, this happened on set today. Is this weird? Is this okay? I felt weird about this. And I always say, I'm, if I'm not on my phone at that minute, within an hour, I'll get back to you. Today, like we are all here together and we're all here to celebrate and experience and learn. And I think because of that environment, we all get along really, really well, even though we may be at very, very different places in our lives. Trust and respect. Yeah. In terms of legacy, Buffy means so much to millions around the world. It's not an exaggeration to say that without Buffy, there might not be Stranger Things or Walking Dead or so many other supernatural monster shows. TV storytelling now seems limitless. What's your take on the current state of the industry? I really love where the industry's going. We still have some work to do. I know it's a little confusing and a little overwhelming with all of the different streaming platforms now, and I know that it can also be financially draining to have all these different subscriptions. So there's gonna be ways that we're gonna figure out how to work that better. But I love the idea that we bring television to consumers in the way they wanna consume it. Yes. Do they wanna binge? Do they wanna watch with no commercials? Do they wanna watch at night? Do they, you know, on an airplane? Like, I like that we bring it to them. You know, I'm old school, I still like to cast to my television and see it on a big screen. My kids, they like to watch on iPads, that's how they've been brought up. I think that all of these channels allow us also to tell creative stories differently. I would have loved to have seen Buffy as a streaming show and how much further we could have gone. Also not having to do 22 episodes a year where you get really physically and emotionally burnt out. So I'm, I love where television is heading right now and I love that movies are part of the television landscape now too. Mm -hmm. Like a movie like Do Revenge, getting Cruel Intentions off the ground was not easy. You know, teenagers can't buy tickets by themselves, right? The mm -hmm. adult needs to buy them. And they choose the movies often. Are they going to be able to go see it? Is it going to make enough money to sustain? Now you can make those because teenagers can drive that now because you can watch it at home. Mm -hmm. And so it was much easier to get a Do Revenge made and also to push the envelope as much further as we did mm -hmm. because we didn't have to worry so much about opening weekend numbers and people could discover it. There's a, a whole discovery process now. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you're saying, they can watch it as each episode is released or wait and binge it if they prefer. Although my kids' friends are very upset about this because they do not like this whole waiting once With a week. The they, waiting. they are not, they are on demand television <laughs> watchers. They complain all the time to me about it. Your list of animated credits also includes The Simpsons and Robot Chicken among others. Well, here at SCAD, animation students and performing arts students collaborate on projects throughout their academic career, and they find out just how challenging acting and directing animated performances can be. How do you approach a voiced character? Yeah, it, it, at first you think, oh, it's so easy, I can go in my sweatpants, I don't have to learn my lines, they're on a piece of paper, but you are responsible for that performance, but it also has to match what's already been animated. And so that's a complicated process because you have to work together on that. But animation is wonderful. I mean, it's, it really allows you to go farther. You have to push yourself and you have to sort of balance over the top, but also keeping it real. Mm -hmm. I love animation. Well, let's talk about fashion. You love it, I love it. And earlier today, you were in the SCAD Fash Museum of Fashion and Film where we featured several costume exhibitions from film and television. Do you involve yourself in the costuming of your roles? That is one of the biggest parts for me. To me, that's when I know, when I really find a character is when I find her wardrobe. And I always said, jobs never seemed real to me until I got the call from the costume designer for sizes. That was always like the mark for me. And when you put someone's costume on, you really find the character. And usually it takes one or two episodes too. We were talking about Scooby-Doo earlier, like those mm -hmm. costumes were so specific. Catherine and Cruel Intentions, we built the character from her wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most important tools an actor can utilize because you're creating the character. Even makeup and hair, it's like, you, you can learn, you can change, you can, but costume is there. Well, we have loved having you here today. Thank you so much for spending time with our students and um, congratulations again on your award. I'm truly honored to be here. This really means a lot to me from you, from the students. I always say this is why I do what I do. It's for the, it's for the fans, the people that really want to consume it and the next generation. And I'm just, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you.